Okay, y'all have seen this in another video. In fact, I think the first video I ever made on for YouTube was featuring this record player. This is a talking book record player from the mid-60s, and even though it still works, I can tell that the audio quality is starting to gradually deteriorate. And when I got this, except for replacing a couple of weak tubes in the amplifier, I don't remember doing any other electronic work to this. Now, I overhauled the drive mechanism to include replacing the idler wheel, replacing the rubber motor mounts, and cleaned and lubricated the mechanism, but I really didn't mess with the amplifier that much. So I think today we're going to open this up and give the amplifier the once over. I know it still has old capacitors and probably some resistors that have drifted out of tolerance. So we'll open this thing up now and have a look. And the first thing we want to do is tie the tone arm down to keep it from flipping and flopping and remove these screws around the perimeter of the motor board as well as these two screws that hold the, the uh, lid support in place. And there's also two screws on the bottom side that have to come out. And then you can just lift the whole motor board assembly up. And here we are taking apart. This is the top side of the amplifier. You can see there's your power transformer, audio output transformer, preamp tube, which is a 12AX7, our audio output tube, which is a 6CM6 and a 6X4 rectifier tube. And you can see these tubes have the little spring-loaded retainers to uh, keep them in their socket so they don't fall out during shipment. And there's the drive motor. And this motor has a date code on it of 1966, which sounds about right for this model. There's the underside of the chassis. Really not a whole lot to it in the way of capacitors. There's these three electrolytic capacitors and this one brown drop cap, which is probably still okay, actually. And this can electrolytic capacitor that's probably still good. But yeah, this particular machine was made until approximately 1968 when the solid state machines came out. Actually I think this was made from around 1965 until 68 and then there was an older two-speed machine that was made probably from the late 50s up until 64 or so that used basically the same amplifier. Okay now you've seen the underside of this and so now we'll get started on it. Okay, here are the three electrolytic capacitors we've replaced so far with modern capacitors. These are each 50 microfarad, 35 volt capacitors made by Cornell Dublier, I believe is how you pronounce it. I replaced them with modern 47 microfarad, 35 volt capacitors, which is close enough. Now we'll analyze these three capacitors and see how they measure up. First we'll connect them to this modern capacitance meter, see what they read. Now keep in mind these are all three 50 microfarad caps. Cap number one, 84 microfarad, so considerably higher than normal. Cap number two, 118 microfarad. This was the cathode bypass cap for the uh, audio output tube. And cap number three, 78 microfarad. Now, let's check these on the old ICO capacitance tester. Cap number one, we get the best I image, with about 20% power factor, as in ESR, so that's kind of high. Let's test it for leakage. Well, not too bad. Of course, the ultimate test will be to compare these readings with a new capacitor. Okay, testing for leakage on cap number two. 
and go up a little higher on the working voltage. There we go. And cap number three to get the best image on the eye. We have we're at about forty, a little over forty, about forty-five percent power factor. So that's pretty high. And let's test for leakage. All right, bringing the voltage up. Yeah, that cap seems to be in the worst shape of the three that we've tested so far. Okay, now let's test a new cap for comparison purposes. And our new capacitor, we have our power factor knob at zero for best eye reading. So, so far so good. Now, leakage test. Yeah, look how quick that eye opened up. So yeah, this capacitor is better than any of the three that we tested. Next, we have the coupling cap for the audio output stage, a .05 microfarad. This is a, I think you'd call it a brown drop or a chocolate drop cap. I've heard it called both terms. And on the modern capacitance meter, it reads .054 microfarad. So that's that's fine so far. But once again, these newer newer capacitance meters don't apply full working voltage to a capacitor. So, you know, with, you, you can't really accurately test a capacitor unless you can apply rated working voltage to it. So now we'll pull out the old ICO capacitor tester again. Okay, I have the capacitor tester set to leakage. And I'm gradually bringing up the working voltage, and so far I'm seeing nothing wrong with this capacitor. And I'm all the way up to 600 volts, and no apparent leakage. So this capacitor can stay, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I've replaced the three electrolytic capacitors. I checked out the main filter capacitor. It's okay, so we'll leave it alone. I uh, found three out-of-tolerance resistors, one of them in the input circuit for the phono cartridge, and the other two in the power supply. This one in the power supply is supposed to be 2.2 K ohms, and it reads 2.65 K, so that one's a little bit out of tolerance. Another one in the power supply is supposed to be 27,000 ohms. It reads 34,000, so that one's pretty far off. And here's a 39 K ohm resistor in the cartridge input circuit. It's reading 48,000, so that one is obviously off. And I also clean the controls with control cleaners, so let's put this all back together and see how it functions. The talking book machine is equipped with a pickup cartridge that has a sapphire or a diamond needle. Instructions for the use and handling of a needle are fastened inside the lid of the machine and should be followed closely. Yeah, that sounds better. Do not better. tamper with the needle or cartridge unnecessarily, as they are designed for long service. A replacement needle will be required only after six months to one year's use, and may be secured from the agency from which this machine... Yeah, we have more volume and now, and... ...replacement needle, the model and serial number of this machine should be stated. Some machines incorporate cartridges with dual needles mounted in one casing. One needle is used for operation, and the other is a spare to be used when the first one is worn out. A swivel lever arm is provided as a simple way of changing needles. When both needles in the cartridge are worn, the entire cartridge must be replaced. All machines are equipped with two-speed motors. The speed change lever will be found at the rear of the turntable. 
The motor is in the neutral position when the lever is over the single raised dot. The machine will play records at 16 RPM when the lever is over the two dots, and those recorded at 33 RPM when the lever is over the three dot position. Yo, this one's the a lever little... should be returned to neutral when not in use. This one's a little bit newer. Install the machine eight RPM with all four rubber two. feet solidly. Its future is here. There's an eight it RPM disc. Bite if you're not careful. Joni's way. Joni Huntley, the American women's champion and record holder in the high jump, indoors and out. And went this to flexible a high disc, disc never were recorded the uh, the best in the world, so that's why they sound weaker than the older 16 RPM record. Okay. Side one. Talking book topics. November, December, 1975. Volume 41, number six. Talking book topics is designed to inform readers of developments and activities in library services for the blind and physically handicapped. It is published bi-monthly as part of the Library of Congress program directed by the Division for the Blind and Physically Handicapped. Correspondence regarding editorial matters should be sent to Publication Services, Division for the Blind and Physically Handicapped, Library of Congress, Washington, D.C., 20542. Talking Book Topics is distributed free to blind and physically handicapped persons who participate in the Library of Congress program. All requests regarding subscriptions to Talking Book Topics should be sent to the library that sends you books. Change of address or request for cancellation should be reported to your library. Table of Contents, Side 1, First Tone Features. Where Do You Get Your Ideas From? by Phyllis A. Whitney. Second Tone, In Brief. Third Tone, News. And by the way, those tones they mention are a form of octone indexing to help you find the article you wish to read on the record faster. When played back at normal speed, you can't hear the tone, but if you play it back at 16 or 33, you can uh, you can hear the tone. Let's see if we can demonstrate that. Talking book records. Fourth tone. Octone indexing. Fifth tone. Adult nonfiction. Side two. Talking book records. Adult nonfiction. Continue. First tone. Adult fiction. There, there you go. Say with me. So now you know how that this works. Question is one most often now let's asked try a 33 writer. RPM the music record and see how it sounds. <laughs> Bad at all. Each side of this record contains exactly the same material. Side one, the Braille side is recorded at a speed of 16 and two-thirds revolutions per minute. Side 2 is recorded at a speed of 8 and one-third revolutions per minute. Introduction to Talking Books. Okay, there you go, my 1966 the the Talking Book Record Player. The Library of Congress. Ought to be ready to go for a few more decades. Thanks for watching, and with a book more to come later. You will find relaxation, entertainment,